Hello and welcome to another episode of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast. This is episode 18. On this show, we strive to showcase guns, gear reviews, and anything else a gun enthusiast may be looking for. <clears throat> we strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Ryan Cross, from the Firearms Radio Network and HunterofDesign.com. Today I have with me a return guest, Daniel Lance from Calamity Arms, and one very special guest, Kimberly Cross. What's going on, man? Hey, not much. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Ryan. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, everyone should know Daniel if, if they are a repeat listener. Um, Kimberly, as I understand, you have a very talented and handsome brother. Is that correct? The rumor is true. I've asked my, my sister to come on a show. She, uh, like many of the crosses, is a outdoorsman, or in her case, an outdoors woman. And she has some expertise in the hunting uh, realm, and she uses a very unique uh, weapon. She uses her crossbow. So she's going to be um, reviewing that on the episode today. <clears throat> So let's get right into the new product spotlight. Uh, first one I saw this week is from Redfield, the company that's um, parent is Loophold, and they're now offering a Red a Redfield Accelerator Micro Red Dot Reflex Sight. <clears throat> so by the I've seen quite a few micro red re, micro red dots um, coming out in the last couple of years of that were at a very low price point you know below two hundred dollars um, the quality and longevity of them is something to leave you a little bit wanting I know weaver Burris Bushnell well, no, Bur the Burris is good the Bushnell is the kind of the lower tier um, and I picked up and did a review earlier uh, on this show of a uh, fire field. And so this looks to be something that might fit in between the lower and higher tiers of micro red dots. Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. It's uh, multi-use. You can use it. They have it pictured here on an AR. And I actually watched a couple YouTube videos with it on an AR. So... My first initial impression was that it was going to be way too tiny, but it actually seems to be, you know, it is small, small enough for a handgun also, but um, it's not too obtrusive, you know. Sometimes EOTEX can be a little chunky, especially when you're trying to get your rifle in a case and stuff, so that's kind of cool. <clears throat> this could certainly go on an AR. I, one of the strengths of it as well is that it can go on to a, a pistol, and it even comes with the, the kit that has uh, adapter plates. It doesn't come, of course, with the plates that mount directly to whatever slide you're running, with, be it a Smith & Wesson M&P or a Glock or a Springfield. I don't think I've ever seen a Springfield with a, with a cutout rail and a, a red dot on it. But um, it comes with a mounter adapter plate, actually a couple different patterns to fit those most popular uh, third-party uh, rail plates comes with the cross slot mount for Picatinny and Weaver style as well of course um, things that I like about it right away it does not have that that awful thumb fastening bolt or, or um, nut that hangs off the side most of the uh, Weaver or some AR-15 accessories are just have that gigantic you know um, thumb tightening screw that just sticks out like half an inch to even sometimes three quarter of an inch and so having that on your pistol kind of ruins the purpose of having a micro red dot sight um, this does not have that it's got a nice low profile to it which I definitely like um, it's a six MOA dot and it has precision one half MOA click adjustments it says slotted for screwdriver or coin um, but based on the pictures, I only see that for the elevation adjustment. The windage looks to be a uh, a hex key, uh, an Allen wrench, which is a little odd to have your elevations using two different tools. I'm wondering if that might be just for the the, the image that we're seeing. 
I'd prefer them to be one or the other, not both. Uh, if they could have both adjustments uh, with a, a screwdriver or a coin, that would be preferred. Um, the other nice thing I see here is that the battery is easy to access. There's a definitely a, a coin a coin accessible uh, cap. Um, so you don't have to, like other sites, take your Allen wrench out and take the whole site off the base and the battery kind of sits in between. Um, this comes right off so you don't have to disassemble your, your site and lose zero for replacing that battery. So it does use the standard CR2032 battery, which most red dots end up using. It is shockproof and waterproof, and it does carry the Redfield warranty, which is... Um, pretty good, um, same as, as loopholes. They'll, you know, send it in and they'll fix it, no questions asked. Um, I, I, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's not as, as far as the design of it, there's there's no, you know, side walls alongside of the glass that extend all the way to the back of the site. It's very kind of more skeletonized, a little bit more minimal, which I, I kind of like. I think it's only one ounce, so it probably it comes a lot uh, lesser in, in weight compared to some of the other options that are out there. Uh, I haven't seen the MSR, MSRP for it yet. I'd like to. Um, I can only speculate based on how much I've paid for other Redfield products. It's probably coming in between, I'm guessing, 250 and 300 maybe two to 300 If it comes in over 300 it better be absolutely flawless um, to compete with the Burris mm -hmm. and the uh, Trigigon RMR, and there's one other that I'm not remembering. But it, I, I would like Redfield to, to to hit the price point right in between those two, because I, I want to pay for pay for quality, but I don't want to, you know, I I could have gotten a you know something different for that. I think you're pretty close on that. From the shot show videos I've seen on it, it was they said under three, um, in between two and three. So, good. Yeah, I'm. I think this would be very cool, especially if you had an AR that had a uh, standard scope or on it, and you had a, a 45 degree, um, you know, adapter where you mount onto a rail and then puts a rail, you know, at the uh, one o'clock or whatnot, and then you can run this on the side. Kind of a quick transition type site for competitions. Um, I think it'd, it'd be a very good investment. So I've got high hopes for it, and I, and I hope to see it in the store and, and see just how well it does it. And it just might be something that I, I want to replace <coughs> my uh, my fast fire that I have, or not? Sorry, not Firefield. Some of these names are starting to get uh, jumbled up in my, my noggin. Too many fires. But, yeah. It, uh, and it does come with a, a durable protective cover. Um, I thought I read something about the um, automatic shutoff. I think when you it looks to have a diode in the front of it, so if you put the cover on, I think it would turn off automatically. Um, I would hope that it... Because I know with some, I've always been concerned, what if you want to use it at night? And so not having any light um, activating, uh, I, I'd hate for this to be inoperable during nighttime hours. So that's, that's, I think that's my only concern. It says that it's rated for uh, from 22 to 458 SOCOM. So it should hold up to recoil uh, well, which that's something I, I don't have the greatest confidence in the current site that I have. And the MOA dot, I think I already mentioned it was 6 MOA. It's a little thick of a dot than what I prefer, but you're not really going to be engaging anything beyond 100 yards. So 6 MOA, um, that's still covering quite a bit at 100 yards. It's a 6 MOA dot? Yeah. Wow. I think well, then... a three, 3 or 2 would have been my preference. Uh, if it's a six, it would rule it out for an AR for me right away because I have Neotech with a one MOA dot in the middle, and yeah. at a hundred, it's hard enough to use. Yeah, but definitely good for handguns. 
Or if shot, yeah, shotguns as well. <clears throat> so that you can go to www.redfield.com slash accelerator. That's A C C E L E R A T O R, and check out that that new site there. So next, I wanted to feature uh, another Ruger 1022, but this is the 50-year anniversary. They actually had a design contest where they asked um, everybody to kind of submit uh, ideas for designing the anniversary um, model 1022. It just turned 50 years old. And so the, uh, the winning design was picked and it was uh, Gary from Michigan. So I found this article on thefirearmsblog.com where Gary uh, submitted a little write-up on his, his rifle. Um, so if, if anyone that doesn't know, the Ruger 1022 was designed in 1964 and is one of the most iconic 22 uh, auto-loading uh, rifles. I mean, it's it's the Honda Civic of the, the rimfire rifle rifle world. There's so many alterations you can do, so many kits, so many accessories, and you can make a highly accurized one going with the Volkwurzen um, brand products, or you can go, you know, Tactical Solutions. Um, I mean, they're, they're a great host for, for anything you really want to, to do. You know, have a suppressor, shoot apple seed, you know, be a, a hunter, uh, you know, for a very small game. It's a great gun. So the this root the then the 50 year design by Gary here, it kind of I'm kind of a little disappointed, and I don't I don't want to insult anybody, but it's it's not really reaching uh, outside the box. It's very much digging into the uh, the cookie jar that Ruger already has. So the stock is almost. I think it, it very much is the same as the Ruger American rifle. If anyone's familiar with that, it's kind of a you know it's 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 a a lower middle uh, priced bolt action rifle. It's got a black synthetic stock. It's got some kind of some uh, different texture to it. It does ha it is interchangeable with the, the the stock, so it's got kind of like a comb height uh, conversion to it. So you can have a, just a flat comb or a little bit of a, 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 a comb that's higher, and then there's also uh, two other sets that are a little bit decreased length of pull. Um, you know, and that's an advantage for uh, kids that are shooting, younger shooters, as well as women or just any men that don't have quite the, the, the length of pull that, they, that other people do, a little bit shorter. And it has the kind of service rifle type iron sights, kind of almost exactly what you see on the um, the gun sight scout model. And in fact, the flash hider looks just like the gun sight scout flash hider, which is kind of kind of an M14 ranch style. Um, so Gary said that his inspiration was Appleseed, which if you're not familiar, that's a the Appleseed project is a, a, t a 22 rimfire uh, shooting uh, project that gets uh, the youth involved into shooting and, and accuracy and, and gun safety, and they pretty much just use iron sights, and they try and get just really good fundamentals down for new shooters. So after being participating in Appleseed about three years ago, he really appreciated uh, a good rifle with good iron sights adjustable stock. Um, so that kind of went into his design. The reason for the, the flash hider, obviously 22 rimfire doesn't put out a whole lot of flash, but being with that new shooters were handling the apple seed uh, rifles that were there for others to use, um, the one of the, op, um, the instructors there were, was actually cutting down A2 uh, flash hiders from AR-15s and putting them on the on the rifles just so when they get kind of dropped in the mud or or you know the muzzle gets um, a little bit more protection you know pr protecting the crown and from anything entering the barrel he this he called it the mud guard so obviously that's something that you know, all these things are parts that 
they've already had designed, whether they had to just downscale them and, or alter them to fit a 1022, that's pretty much what it came to be. It's not a bad looking 22, it's just it looks like someone made a, a an American 1022 as far as following that same uh, design guidelines. So they're going to be uh, producing these these rifles so everyone else can buy one if they want. I don't see an MSRP on those. Um, I know that the, the takedown 1022 was really hot in the last couple of years. So th this is going to be the, the next 1022 uh, generation that comes out. I don't know as far as the production numbers, um, but if it's something you're interested in, uh, Google it, look it up, and and make sure that you, uh, you're you able to get a hold of one of these because I think that uh, a 1022 in any configuration is a blast to have, and I think everyone should have one. Yeah. Do you have a 10? You got a 1022, Lance? Uh, okay. You got a 1022, Kim? Mm -hmm. Of course you don't. Uh, no. Have I let you shoot one of mine yet? I don't remember. Uh, I feel like you have. Uh, the last time I shot one of yours, uh, I liked the accuracy of it. Uh, I just felt comfortable being a female shooter uh, picking it up. I'll tell you what, if uh, it's a little hard with you being in a different state, but if you ever move back home, I'll definitely get you a 1022 because you're gonna. I got um, you know my girlfriend one, and she loves it. And I feel like you should definitely have one too. So I'm putting it out on the air. It's official. If you come back to Washington State, this will be one of the first firearms that I, I get for you as a, as a 1022 because I love you and I just think everyone needs to have one. Hold him to that because he said I take one that of as the first. A, uh, I take that as a verbal contract. Thank you. All right. So, Lance, do you have you ever, you've got a 1022? You know, I do not. I grew up with a cricket, um, or actually it was a little chipmunk, and I love that thing. Uh, but my house burned down as a teenager, and so we lost it, and I never got around to buying another one. Um, my sons have a Remington Junior Special. It's a little heavy for them, though. It's kind of like, you know, the length of pulls a little much, and so I've got to deal with all that, trying to train them on sandbags or bipods, you know. Um, but I like the fact that this one can be... Uh, shorten, you know, you put the smaller butt, uh, butt pads on it and make it uh, smaller for your kid. And then as they grow, you can put the bigger ones on. So that's kind of cool. And then the whole, um, you know, I kind of laughed when I saw that flash hider. But once I read why it was there, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense because kids are um, not always the most uh, muzzle aware uh, shooters out there. So that's something that they're always working on. So I like that. I think it's pretty cool. I like the peep sights. I think everyone should learn to and continue to throughout life uh, shoot with peep sights. You know, scopes and, and red dot are okay too, but you know, you really develop those fundamentals with peep sights. Yes, and that they're they look to be uh, tall enough to where they clear. It does look like it has a an integral Picatinny rail on the receiver. Either that, or they're both stainless, and they just they they match. But it's probably removable. But um, the 1022s that you get from the store right now, you know, they've got the uh, the rear sight and the front sight are both attached to the the barrel. But when you flip up that rear sight, uh, and you have a a rail mount, whether it be Weaver or Picatinny, you, you typically can't you make use of your iron sights very well because they block. Having uh, the rear sight mounted behind the the scope rail, you know, right behind on the the back end of the receiver, not only gives you more sight radius, so you can have better accuracy, but you can actually make use of the darn thing. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that feature. Um, you know, being able to, if you wanted to use this for your your kid to first start hunting, you know, squirrels or rabbits or whatnot. Put a scope on there, and if something happens, uh, they can always take the scope off and still utilize the irons. I think that's a great, um, great thing that was missing from the 1022 market that is kind of almost standard with the AR-15s having, 
you know, iron sights that are not, you know, if not co-witnessed, at least available to, to, to use if your optic goes down. Um, but like you said, learning um, to shoot iron sights really well is uh, very important for new shooters and something that I, I need to shoot irons more often and not rely on, on red dots because it almost gets boring, you know, just, you know, shooting a red dot and, and it kind of takes away the, the challenge from it. So keep a lookout for those, and happy birthday to the 1022. Uh, the next product I wanted to bring up, it's not necessarily new, it's uh, something from Viridian, it's uh, their reactor holsters. So what they're doing is they're uh, now selling lasers with holsters in a, a bundle, and so the holsters are actually um, some you know, major brand name holsters, and they're specifically designed the Kydex to activate the laser when the the pistol is drawn. So it's called the Viridian RTL, and then dash, and then usually the, the whatever the pistol model comes after that. So uh, right now I'm looking at the LCP, so it's the Viridian RTL dash LCP. So not only does it have a laser on there, but it's got a, a flashlight. And the uh, flashlight is the radiant system, so it's not really just a, um, a spotlight, a circle. It's kind of got a, an oblong uh, flood to it. So you don't get just see just... If you're using it in the home, it, you, you get more peripheral coverage of the, the light. Uh, it does have a low battery indicator on the laser itself, um, and then it, it has constant or strobe modes and instant on uh, when you're drawing from the included holster. So we're looking at $119 for the laser and the holster. I mean that that's a pretty darn good deal if you don't already have a holster. And these are they have concealment holsters as well as outside the waistband. And I mean, I saw there was some crossbreed, some DeSantis. There's some some you know, uh, pretty good holster manufact holster models that you might be already familiar with when you carry Galco. your yeah Galco. I mean, if you carry your Glock in a similar holster for consistency, it's it's definitely nice. I know uh, every around every Christmas season, I see people walking out of Cabela's and uh, Bass Pro with bought these little Ruger boxes and they're all LCPs because they all kind of go on sale right then and it's a really good buy for uh, anybody that wants a concealed pistol or a, a just a small smaller size concealable pistol. Um, so I won't make the claim that I'll get this for you too, Kim, but. Uh, after the 1022, I'll be looking at one of these for sure. Uh, I think we should find somebody that has them and let you try them out because they're nice little pistols and, and you might enjoy it. Hook me up. Yeah, I'm I think the... Uh... <coughs> go ahead. No, I was about go to ahead, say, Lance. I think the Firearms Radio Network needs a T&E, uh, one of these, to check, test them out. So, Viridian, if you're listening, we need one. Um, I see here on the output it's 100 lumens, which is pretty good for a little bitty light on that. Um, 140 lumens on the strobe. The run time's not too awesome. I mean, 30 minutes constant and then 50 minutes strobe. But if you consider, you know, the amount of time that you're going to use a flashlight on your handgun, it's just like that Surefire I reviewed a few weeks ago. It's got a two and a half hour run time, I think it was. But I still have the same batteries in it that I got that I had when I got it. So it lasts a lot longer than you think, even though it only says 30 minutes constant. Oh, so this is this is a, a flash, a standalone flashlight. This doesn't have a laser on it? No, I'm not, I think I'm it not, has... Okay. I think it has both. Well, I thought so too, because Viridian is known for their flashlights, but I think this might be... I need to see a picture of the front of it. It might be just be a standalone flashlight. Let me... Let me fact check that real quick. I should have done that before I made an incorrect assumption. Yeah, 
I don't see on this. Um, okay, so I did find setting. a. I see a picture in front of it, and I don't. It does look like a. It is a standalone flashlight. But Viridian, they make. Uh, I think they make a different uh, holster that's specifically outside the waistband, um, where it does activate the laser. That's that's just a different product. Yeah, I think I, we just clicked on a different one. But either way, yeah. I mean, automatic on on your flashlight or your laser, that's kind of cool. Yeah, typically, I mean, it, it depends on what you imagine when you draw a pistol. Some people don't want a, a, a light to be automatically on to kind of broadcast their presence like a beacon. Um, but some people th see it as, well, if I'm pulling out this little LCP, it's because I'm being directly confronted, and so I need that flashlight on right then and there. And maybe if it's a situation to where you're you're drawing it, but you don't want to broadcast that light, you could draw it a little bit slower and then uh, disengage the light um, before you uh, present the pistol at the ready position. I found so I think laser. Uh, 12 hour runtime, 12 plus hours on the laser. They have the exact same feature and model. Um, looks like a red laser on this one that I'm looking at here. Now, is that the the tack lock? Is that what they call that? It says Viridian R5-R-LCP, and it's okay. a laser instead of a flashlight, like we just talked about. It comes oh, on automatically go. when you draw it, and then uh, I don't know, like. I guess you could reach up and hit the button to turn it off if you wanted to turn it off until it was time to use it. I, but like you say, if you're going to be pulling out your LCP, most likely you're not, you know, you choosing. I would hope you're not going to choose that to clear your house with. If that's all you got, I understand. But you know, if I'm going to clear my house and, like you say, you want to have your light, but you don't want to on constantly to broadcast your position. Um, I, I don't remember where I was going with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. <clears throat> so Viridian is a very good laser company. Um, I had a Viridian once, and I I regret selling it. Uh, it kind of I sold it with a package deal with the the pistol. It was on a Springfield XD. It was the SXD model. It was just a standalone green laser with a, it had a strobe function, awesome controls. I had it for about two and a half years. Uh, it only one time I think in the cold weather and then it kind of extended use it, it stopped working even after replacing the battery I sent it back to Viridian and um, I think maybe it was just a busy time I didn't get it back for maybe a month a little bit over a month but uh, it was you know no cost to myself besides shipping it um, and then it worked fine after that so uh, I'm actually I would definitely consider getting another Viridian product for my latest uh, carry pistol or, or one of my other secondary pistols for sure. Uh, you cannot go wrong with a Viridian. And now they're offering red lasers, which inherently are a little bit lower in price. Um, so you have that option too if you don't like green lasers for whatever reason. I like green because it uh, you can see it easier. Um, it goes farther and, and brighter. If you hold a, a red and a green laser with the same, um, you know, the same rated, whatever, however you rate lasers with, uh, you know, watts or whatnot, the green is always going to be a little bit brighter. The only thing is in the cold weather, it's a little bit dimmer. And, um, you know, I think red at night probably performs a little bit better because you see red at night a little easier. But, you cannot go wrong with a Viridian laser, and I, I would stand by any one of their products for sure. <clears throat> so that concludes the new product spotlight. Let's get right into the main topic of reviews. So, Daniel, what did you bring for us tonight? I brought one of my favorite toys. As you can see, it's clear. It is my Kimber 1911 Eclipse Target 2. Um, this is the target model, so it came with uh, Meprolite adjustable night sights, and uh, you know, definitely a plus there. But there's times that I look back and I think it would have been nice to have. The, you you've seen the Kimber sights that are fixed; they kind of have that swooped look to them. And 
they look cool, but you know, the target sites are a little more squared off and stuff, but you know, I did find out later on that you can interchange. Uh, you can't put the fixed sites on a Kimber target slide that you get what you get and that's it. So anyway, um, 45 ACP, it's a full size 1911, uh, five inch barrel. I think it's five and a quarter actually to be specific. Um, I bought this thing about 10 years ago and absolutely love it. It's like I told Ryan earlier, it's been my safe queen for years and years. And I finally resolved that I'm going to get it out and enjoy it, you know, and shoot it some more. And, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I can make my son a better shot with it than I am. So I did, uh, I did start in with the, we like shooting podcast, little competition and was less than impressed with my own shooting with it. But anyway, nonetheless, so to get into the review of this thing, Kimbers are known for being extremely uh, high quality, tight tolerances, accurate. Um, I did have some issues, though, to be honest with you. When I first bought it, the first 300 rounds that I fired through it, I was having some stove pipes and some jams. Uh, granted, some of those first rounds were semi-wad cutters and things like that. Um, but I was really frustrated. You know, I just dropped a lot of money on this thing. And I was having problems, but after firing the first 300 or so rounds, it fired flawlessly. Um, ever since that last time, I have not had a misfire or a malfunction with this firearm um, in the last probably nine and a half years. So it's a great quality product, and you know it doesn't rattle around like most other 1911s do. It's pretty tight. That can be a double-edged sword sometimes, though. If you get it really dirty or uh, in a gritty situation, you may experience some trouble. Um, Colts are known for having that little rattle, and I think there's a reason for that. Um, but I'm definitely happy with my Kimber. I have both. I have a Colt and a Kimber, and I must say this, it comes with a four- to five-pound aluminum uh, match trigger, and you can definitely tell the difference in the trigger um, between a Kimber and a Colt. Now, my Colt is just a Colt Defender. It's nothing special, but, you know, one night I was playing with them both, you know, safely, and testing the triggers and really noticed the, the Kimber's trigger is just top-notch. So that's one of the things that I just absolutely love about it. Um, let's see here. Go over the rest of my facts. Everything about this gun is crisp and smooth. I mean... You can, you can just hear it. It's just, and when you pull the slide back to the rear, everything's just slick. There's no wiggle room or anything. It's just, I love it. A match grade barrel, um, stainless match grade barrel and bushing. And the Kimber Eclipse is known for its finish. It's a brushed stainless finish. Mine's a little, may have a few little Mars on it because I've had it for so long. But, and then it's got a black oxide to contrast it. So you can see on the top it has black oxide and on the sides on the flats it's all brushed stainless. And so in all the lettering and all the grooves you can see it's black. I have one complaint with Kimber and on this gun. I don't know if they've fixed this problem since 10 years ago or not. But you can see right here on the magazine release the black oxide just kind of wore off there. And that wore off pretty early in the game. Probably within two years that was worn off there. Um, so, you know, that's one, one downside that I've found really one of the only downsides other than this firearm being expensive. Um, the Kimber Eclipse comes standard with just a regular, you know, wooden grips, the wooden diamond grips here. And I ended up putting the Kimber Tactical, if you guys have seen that one, uh, Kimber Tactical because they have the logo on it and I just wanted to be special and the uh, extended magwell. Um, just really like the feel. It does add to the butt of it though, so like if you're gonna plan on concealed carrying, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, superb detail, accuracy is awesome. My father can punch a one inch hole with this thing. I just haven't mastered it yet. Um, smooth operation. It's target market is serious 1911 fans, competition in law enforcement. I've come across several uh, law enforcement officers that carry nothing but a Kimber um, because it's reliable and accurate. And so um, 
I've already gone over 5 inch match grade barrel and bushing, aluminum gray uh, match grade 4 to 5 pound trigger from the factory, Meprolite adjustable night sights. Um, one other thing, uh, 30 LPI front strap checkering right here. And that really makes a difference when your hands are kind of wet or it's cold out. You can really feel that extra grip that you have on the front strap of the handgun. I've had others that don't have it at all, and it's definitely a nice feature. So if you're going to get a Kimber, go all out and get one with the, the 30 LPI front strap checkering. Um, MSRP is, take a deep breath, 1393 but there are some out there. I mean, you can get some used ones for around a thousand, um, and also on Gun Broker and stuff, there's some that are about eleven hundred to twelve hundred. So, you know, it's if you want nice things, you have to pay for them, I guess. Um, accurate, reliable, beautiful, superb quality, balanced. My uh, my negative points here on this was it's expensive, and the break-in period. You know, that's. I've had guns where you didn't have to really, you didn't notice any difference during the break-in period, and then I've had others that you did. So, um, and the only other complaint that I had with this gun over the last 10 years was the finish, the black oxide finish wearing. So I give it a score of an eight, which is great. And if you guys disagree with me in any way, I challenge you to go to the Gun and Gear Reviews website and tell me what's up. <clears throat> and if you are bold enough to do so, I will take your comment as a, an official entry into the giveaway for these everyday carry duct tape uh, that I've been trying to uh, pass on to our, our, our listeners for the last couple of weeks. So more than two reasons to participate and, and get on the website and... Uh, I haven't leave seen a comment one yet. on. It, it must be in the mail, huh? Yeah, you haven't you haven't told me what color you want. Do you want black, oh. pink, or uh, digital camo? Pink, of course. All right. <laughs> Sorry, ladies, that's one less pink available. <laughs> Very nice pistol. That is one yeah. sexy 1911. Uh, Kim, if you're taking notes on Christmas presents or birthday <laughs> presents, uh, that's mm -hmm. that's a good one to put down. <laughs> He'll get you a 1022 if you get him a Kimber Eclipse. It's 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 fair. I think that's pretty fair, right across I the mean, board. I mean, the price tag may be a little bit off, but since I get that 22 as well, we'll go for it. All right. <clears throat> $200 1022 and 1400 1911. We'll talk some more after the podcast. All right. <clears throat> Very cool. Thanks for showing that. That is uh, definitely a beauty. Um, yeah. So, Kim, let's let's hear about your crossbow. All right. Well, unfortunately, I did not bring mine for show and tell. Um, since I'm in Missouri, it's out in Washington State uh, from my last hunt, and uh, I'll be going back in the fall to use it there. So best to uh, keep it stored near my dear brother for safekeeping. Uh, be good to it. Uh, but yeah, what I hunt with, um, it's a Horton Pro 175 crossbow. Uh, let me just tell you some specs here. It's a 175 pound draw rate, uh, 310 feet per second. And with my scope that's on it, I know in some states it's illegal to hunt with a scope uh, and others it's not. My scope's a 4x32 um, and it has a drop points for 20, 30, 50 yards. And uh, with the speed and weight of my arrows, um, I do notice that there's a gap. Um, so there's the 30, then it drops to 50. And so right in the middle there's a where the 40 yardage is, um, just with the flight of my arrows. That's how they set it up. Uh, the specific arrows I use on this crossbow, they're 19-inch Easton aluminum, uh, XX75s, uh, 2216 with a 450 grain weight, and they're tipped with a 100 grain shuttle T broadhead. Um, and I really like the performance of them. Um, I got this 
crossbow uh, as a gift from my father in 2009, um, and I've used it to hunt elk in Washington and um, more recently a whitetail in central Missouri and blacktail uh, over Christmas break in Washington. And um, I think, I mean, for a seven-year-old uh, crossbow, it's um, really fast, accurate, uh, pretty lethal. Uh, because I'm a handicapped hunter, uh, it it's great for me. I can join in on the hunt and um, be able to use it myself. It's compact enough for a female hunter. Um, it comes in a it's a camo dull matte finish, and so um, when I'm out um, in my tree stand or uh, even in brush, uh, it's got a pretty good. Um, camo look to it and uh, the one thing the one issue that I had it right off the bat the first hunt in um, Washington for the elk one of the limbs the left limb as it was loaded um, because the loading process it came with a crank so you put on it and you can kinda wind it up because it's a little bit hard if you're not um quite in shape to uh, pull it and draw the bone lock it but the uh, it gets locked on my back with the arrow and I'm hiking up uh, with my father and we hear this cracking noise and it didn't sound like elk stomping through the forest, it sounded like fiberglass shattering. And I look over and I see uh, one of the limbs fraying on my back while it's fully loaded. Uh, so after we got through um, with that issue, sent it to the manufacturer and they were really quick about switching it out for a limb that wasn't effective. So it turns out, um, post hunts, I haven't had an issue with it. Looks like that was just the first um, uh, little bump in the road for me. But um, overall, I really enjoy the long-standing accuracy of this bow. I know that um, Horton, and I mean, seven years later, there's a lot of bows that are lighter, faster. Um, but it's easy to load. Um, it has that the cocking crank that comes with it. Um, uh, but overall, it's just it's great for you know a a petite female to use or um, anyone who's disabled. Um, I've had great accuracy with it up to 80 yards, um, getting my target in there and uh, getting it sighted in. So. I uh, I would give my weapon um, an eight overall. I know uh, in a couple of years I would love to see what a lighter crossbow kind of feels like, cause kind of holding it for a while, uh, you know, I, I tend to shake a little bit. I got to get those push-ups in before I, I start my hunt. Um, but I really like it. It's been a great uh, weapon to enter the uh, hunting world in and feel like I'm capable. Um, and I can do it on my own and be successful. Yeah, I've I, I even me shooting it. It's a little heavy. I, whether the the shape of it, um, I, it feels like you're trying to shoot like uh, a fully decked out AR-10, like free-handed. <laughs> it's a little difficult. Uh, so we have shooting sticks that we bring along with us on our hunts. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be I'd love to see. Uh, like to feel a lighter bow and, and see if that's easier to shoot freehanded because you're not always able to shoot from a position where you can deploy those shooting sticks or, or get a good rest on a, a log or a stump. But it, it is really accurate. It's amazing how fast those arrows, I mean, they, they there's very little uh, drop. I mean, just at eight, as soon as we had it sighted in, what was that, 20 yards, 30 yards, we stepped on back to 50, 60, 70, and 80, and we were popping little balloons with one one bolt each. Uh, so I was, I was pretty impressed with that. Um, it it hasn't we haven't taken anything with it have yet, have we? No. No. So that's something that we're definitely going to remedy. Uh, but it, it's definitely capable. We just got to keep putting our time in the field. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so and. We, Price-wise, let me just go in uh, to the price. When we got it, um, around $400 um, was retail. And so the bows out there now, um, I did some research recently, and 
the lighter you go, man, the more expensive they get. They have ones that, you know, are clear up in uh, the $1,500 range, uh, and they, they look great. They have great specs, um, but you definitely pay for the lighter weight. But, I mean, for $400, it's, it's a killer. It was a great way to get you to come along with us in the hunts because, at least in Washington State, uh, you're not a, you you cannot hunt with a crossbow unless you uh, have a, a a signed doctor's note. Much like skipping gym class in high school, you uh, you need a medical reason uh, to why you need to use a crossbow during archery season and not a, a standard compound or a longbow. Um, so Kimberly was lucky enough to to have a good reason, and and they al allowed her to use the crossbow. And uh, now that she's branched out into a different state, Missouri, um, she doesn't have the the same hunting restrictions, but she still uses the crossbow because it's the best solution for her to hunt during archery season. Yeah, and I do have a a hunter's permit. Uh, for both Washington and Missouri um, that has the disabled uh, just kind of listed on there to kind of have um, paperwork, you know, whenever I'm, especially on public land, you know, to show mm -hmm. um, just the legitimacy of my use of the crossbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Missouri's. Um, they, they follow the same path there. Um, if, you ha if you're disabled in any way and you have the paperwork, you can use a crossbow during archery season, which is mm -hmm. kind of cool. I'm a little jealous. I, I use a regular bow, and I, you know, you go to pull it back on that, that animal, and you're waiting for that perfect shot. And with a regular uh, bow, you know, I use a, uh, a compound bow, but still you can only hold it for so long until your whole body just starts to move, and and you can either got to let the shot go or pull it back, you know. All right. Yeah. It's nice to just aim and pull that trigger. It's still a hunt, though. You know, it's uh, still work. Oh, yeah. You still have a lot of tracking to do when you're done. Mm -hmm. And we, we still have to get you to clean your own deer and uh, see how much meat we can, we can get strapped to your pack frame. <laughs> I mean, you know, I get those special hunts and I'll let you come with me. I just think it's an even trade-off. You know. I'm I'm looking forward to you getting your first elk. If it's if it's half as as uh, adventure as when I got mine, you're gonna love it, Kim. It's yeah. it's gonna be amazing. Uh, yeah. I mean that they're, they're so vocal, and when you, in the right season during the rut, they come right to you. So your opportunity for a good shot, especially with something as accurate as that crossbow. I mean, you're you're gonna be able to to make a good placed hit, hopefully, and it's gonna be a blast. Yeah. And, Can't wait for that experience. Um, I think mine with a muzzle loader, and I think you reloading your crossbow, you'll probably be able to do it a little bit faster <laughs> than with a muzzle loader, but it'll still be fun. And uh, thanks for doing that review, Kim. And yeah. I, I definitely look forward to hunting with you more. Thank you. You as well. Yeah. And you're actually the, uh, I think the first female we've had on the show, uh, at least. Uh, to my knowledge, since I've I've taken over around episode seven or eight, so congratulations. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, it's good to hear. Uh, so I, I want to do a, a quick review uh, this week on a piece of gear that I always goes with me to the range, and it's actually uh, this jacket that I'm wearing right now. It's a uh, Condor Outdoor soft shell uh, jacket. They call it the the Phantom. And it's soft shell. It comes in a couple different colors. This one is coyote. It comes in um, black. It comes in uh, kind of a how would you describe the, that green? OD green. <clears throat> it's uh, not really an OD. Yeah, it's. I guess you'd call it an OD. Uh, it's it's a light. Jacket as as most most soft shell jackets tend to be. Uh, it's got plenty of pockets, so when you're going to the range, you've got uh, lots of you know for you putting your magazines and whatnot. You can plenty of room for all those. Um, it's got your um, four by four uh, 
belt uh, hook and loop on each sleeve for you so you can put your your patches and whatnot. Um, I got some patches from uh, LA uh, LA Police Gear. Uh, they're they're mil spec monkey patches, so just kind of fun morale patches to you know kind of joke around with your with your buddies. Um, it's got uh, a zippered pocket in the the left and right arm underneath that Velcro patch, uh, which is kind of nice if you you know want to put your range membership card in there. Um, so that way, whenever you're wearing this jacket to the range, if someone wants to verify your membership, you can just pop that out. You can. Um, it's got a, a bre one breast pocket. Uh, it's on the left breast, and it's perfect for cell phones. So, I mean, I always I keep my phone right there. It's easy access. Uh, if I have it on silent or, or vibrate, I can I can feel that pretty easily. <clears throat> the inside, uh, they do run a little small, so uh, I think this is an extra large, and it's a. Uh, it feels a little bit like a large. Um, it is. It's not made in the USA, so I, I think just being that it's made overseas, it comes a little bit smaller. Um, so the colors, it's olive drab, uh, black, tan, which is this coyote, navy, and then a, a foliage color. Um, it's got a f the full front double zipper, underarm bent zipper, and that's my only... One of my only complaints with this jacket is that it has these vent zippers kind of right where your armpit is, and they don't line, uh, line you know, cover it up with uh, mesh or anything. So I understand if it's hot and muggy and you you need to kind of cool your body, your core down, you unzip these zippers and it's kind of like a, a nice vent. The only problem is that there's no mesh there, so you could literally reach into that hole and, and, and you know, give your, you'd be touching, you know, your armpit. Um, so not having any liner on the inside, any mesh or anything, you actually, if you're wearing a, a, a short sleeve shirt, you can actually feel that with your with your skin a little bit. Mm. It's a little bit um, uncomfortable. And I wish that they, they had done that a little bit differently because I don't have any reason for someone to need to reach in there unless, you know, I get shot, and that's it. But we're gonna take the jacket off at that point anyway. <laughs> or someone goes in for a tickle. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's it's like a tickle pocket. It's weird. Uh, it's uh, the weird wrist... tickle pocket technology. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the um, the cuffs are hook and loop, Velcro, adjustable, uh, which is kind of nice because if you wear gloves, uh, you can kind of open that. Put your gloves on and kind of uh, put your sleeve over the glove and then tighten it down so that you don't have any skin exposed if it's cold. It's not the warmest jacket, you know. It does have a fleece lining. Um, I, it's a nice coat for just a, a fairly drafty day. Uh, it, it, you know, as most soft shell jackets do, it does okay in the wind. It's not really meant for snow or anything. I've got warmer jackets for that that I use at the range. Um, it does have four pockets on the inside, so it has kind of larger, just open pockets that you could fit your gloves in. Very generous space there. So, um, but then in, in front of those, it actually has a zippered pocket as well. Hmm. And then on the left side, uh, right next to the uh, the the zippered pocket, it actually on the right side it's zippered. On the left side, it's got just a Velcro enclosure. But just right of that is a, a loop for you to put like a pen. So if, if a Sharpie is, is a common kit for you at the range for marking your hits on, on paper, uh, that'd be a you know, real simple place to put a Sharpie. Um, so the, the zipper is a double zipper pull. And what others are saying is the... Here's a review straight from Condor Outdoors website. The quality of the jacket was far better than most of the bad reviews have you believe. For the price, you can't go wrong. I have used it extensively in the Pacific Northwest, represent, and it has stood out up to some of the worst conditions it has shown here. 
The only downfalls are like previously noted, the zipper can be redesigned a lot better. It is hard to zip sometimes and impossible with gloves. I can verify this. <clears throat> the, the waist area should have a drawstring because wearing this jacket makes it seem like I am pregnant. Sizes do fit small. Um, you know, I, I can zip this jacket up. It's definitely not as comfortable as, say, maybe if I got like an X, 2XL. It would maybe fit more like a regular XL. Um, I can't really wear a, like a hoodie or anything underneath it because that that's just too thick, and so I can't fully close it and not feel like I'm you know bloated or or wearing a bulletproof vest. The uh, the price point uh, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's it's seventy five to hundred dollars depending on the size. I guess the larger the size, the more material they increase the price a little bit. Um, so this was purchased on Amazon. Uh, this was uh, one of my Christmas presents this year for my significant other. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's lightweight. Uh, the material helps regulate temperature. I run kind of hot, so um, I don't like overheating. I'd rather be chilly uh, than, than be sweating in the least. So this is a nice rain jacket for me. Once you start uh, letting lead fly, usually, you know, your uh, adrenaline kind of kicks in and the blood starts flowing. And uh, if you are a little bit cold, typically you're I'm comfortable right there. Uh, if this jacket was, you know, had like really good insulation and was too warm, man, I'd be burning up the range. I'd be taking it right off. So it's definitely good for good fit right there. It's water resistant. Uh, the claim. Uh, being that it's soft shell, it says that this claim to fame is it's durable, waterproof, lightweight, breathable jacket contains billions of microscopic pores smaller than a raindrop, but hundreds times larger than a molecule of water, which makes it waterproof. The triple layer com com combination wicks moisture, stops water from passing through, and circulates by heat. And I would attest to all those as being true. It's a very comfortable jacket. This is actually the only soft shell jacket I've ever had. You know, I've never gotten a Columbia or anything like that, but uh, I definitely like it. It's a good range jacket. I like being able to slap on uh, patches when I want. Uh, I wish I would have ordered a, a little bit larger size so I can zip it up with uh, some more layers underneath and that it had that uh, some kind of mesh to... to barrier in between my, my skin and the the tickle zipper but uh, those are my only complaints I'm going to rate it as 7.0 and uh, that's my review on that uh, I first saw this jacket I think uh, on YouTube I've seen a couple YouTube shooters of well repu of a high reputation uh, having a jacket like this and I kind of hunted down what what it was there's definitely more expensive jackets, 511 and whatnot out there. I wanted something that was a little bit, uh, you know, more entry level. So this is the one that I had settled on. So I think it's definitely a, a nice, nice jacket, especially if you're going to be recording yourself shooting and you want to look kind of like the rest of your peers. It's a, a good jacket to fit that. From here, you look cool, bro. Thanks, sis. <laughs> How's the waterproof part, Ryan? Have you are you able to like go out in some drenching rain and not get soaked? Uh, well, other than your head, I, I I really don't shoot in the rain. Uh, I I've never been caught in the rain necessarily. I plan my my range days pretty well, um, so I haven't gotten to fully waterproof test it. I mean, if you want to hold on and I can go jump in the shower real quick, come back. But All right. uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> No, it's pretty. It's pretty good. I mean, I think if it was a torrential downpour, uh, it it would uh, eventually start to get a little, little soggy. Um, but most of the water just beads right off. I think it, it it's kind of a relative team relative thing factor to how how much water is coming down at you at one time. Well, yeah, it's not intended um, to be a raincoat. It doesn't have a hood on it. It's just a regular no. collar. It looks yep. pretty cool. I'm interested. Yeah, uh, the collars are, are kind of, I don't know, they're not real, sh they don't have like a cardboard or anything, so they're kind of floppy, flimsy. Um, so 
you know, I don't really iron my coats or anything like that, so that's probably the reason why, just being on the floor a little bit too much. Um, but you know, overall, good jacket. The length is good as far as when I have it zipped up, you know, when I bend over to pick off my brass, you know, no one's getting flashed with my plumber's crack or nothing like that. So uh, it's got nice, uh, you know, nice lining, you know, definitely soft, comfortable. I think getting a smaller size for your significant other is not a bad idea at all. I I think they they'd enjoy that quite a bit. Um, you know, make sure you pick up some some uh, some cool patches from LA Police Gear and and put that on there for them. Kind of customize it specifically uh, for them. Definitely a cool thing to do. So let's get into the tech gadget section. And this week I have something very cool that I'm I'm been looking forward to showing you guys for a week now. It's from a company, and I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. It's it's Radatech or Raid Tech, and what they are are special grips for your pistols, but they also accommodate uh, AR-15s as well. And it's uh, integrating technology into the grip that um, sensors. So they have kind of two two uh, models. It, the one's a digital counter, so it'll actually count each time the, the weapon is fired. It's just a little LED counter that's built into the the grip. So if you go to the web, the website, raidtech.com, that's R-A-D-E-T-E-C.com, on the home page you'll see a 1911 and a Smith & Wesson M&P. So the 1911 shows uh, this little LED display. It's not very big, not very uh, intrusive at all. And it's actually, if you're holding the pistol out in front of you like you're going to be firing, the LED screen is actually facing you. So you you know you don't have to look at the side of your grip at all to, to see the LED. You can read it as you're firing. Um, so it just counts counts your rounds as you're shooting. And the other one is called the LED Advisor. And what that actually does is it has uh, just an LED light that changes color and lets you know when you're, uh, when you're reaching the last rounds in your magazine. And then it's got a light for when your magazine is dry. So bright LED light in three colors. So when you have three rounds left, it's a blue light. When you have two rounds left, it's a green light. When you have one round left in the magazine, not in the chamber, it's one light. And then when it's blinking red, that means there is no round. There are no rounds in the in the magazine. But there very well could be one in the chamber, though. So you have to take that into account. Um, the purpose for this use I could see is if you are shooting. Competition. I don't know if this would set you into a different class, uh, but basically, if you want to do a tactical reload, and, and you know you're just starting out, maybe, or and you're not, you don't have the counting your your shots mastered. This would definitely help you out. So if you want to pop in a new mag while you have one round in the chamber, so that when you fire that round, it automatically strips a fresh round from that new magazine. That's a tactical reload. This is what well, this would help you know exactly at what time to do that. It also would probably help in, in your in mu muscle memory as well as you, if you're you know practicing a stage, you would kind of start to develop a little bit of memory of okay you know now is when I reload whatnot. Uh, so easy to install. It just replaces the factory grip, and the system is the same size and weight as the standard factory grip. It has a manual activation button uh, to check to see if the, the firearm is low in ammunition and uh, uses a CR2016 or a CR2032 battery and highly shock and temperature resistant polymer body and the system has an auto dim feature for low light situations so it's not if you're shooting like a night stage it's not going to be uh, blinding you and robbing you of some of your, your night vision. So that's the the LED advisor. Let's look at the LED, uh, the digital counter. <clears throat> uh, 
I'm, I'm hoping to be able to uh, do an official review on one of these products in the near future, so stay tuned for that if this piques your interest. The, uh, the digital counter, it's a digital display, manual activation pad as well. Uh, it does come with, I know that the, the LED indicator comes with two magazines, and those have, uh, looks like these blue inserts inside the spring, and the follower is blue. And so it, inside the grip, there's sensors that, that can sense when those blue parts that's inside the spring and the follower are moving through that magazine, through those OV ports. If you have a 1911 or you've shot a 1911, you know, some of those magazines have, you know, just circle cutouts in the metal so you know how many rounds you've loaded. So this reads that and, and lets you know, or at least the, um, the, the counter to let you know how many rounds you have left in the magazine. That counts, so that's how it knows how many is left. Uh, the digital counter, I would assume, just goes off of recoil impulse. So it displays the total number of shots discharged. Uh, it's activated by a small button on the top of the left side grip panel. High shock and temperature resistant polymer body. Easy to install just like the other model and it also has auto dim feature. So you have two options here and uh, it's available for 1911. Uh, Beretta 92FS is coming soon as well as something for the AR15 M16 and that's uh, I'd be interested. I'll try and get more information for you guys. I'm assuming it might be something like a grip, uh, a magwell grip, kind of like uh, maybe like Mako, or maybe a proprietary magazine. Um, but I think both for handguns and AR-15, M16, M4 configurations, it's definitely a handy little tech tool for for teaching and training. The yeah, LED here that this plays. Oh, sorry, man. Oh, I was just gonna mention that the LED advisor, which is the one that shows how much is left in the magazine, that's going to be available for the 1911, the Beretta 92FS, and the Smith and Wesson MP40, um, as well as the the MP9. Uh, let me make. I just want to make sure that the listeners know. Uh, which one of these is available for which uh, calibers or <clears throat> models. So, okay, there's no arrows on this one. Okay, so go ahead, Lance. Oh, I was going to say, it says it displays a total number of shots discharged while installed on the firearm. So I guess theoretically if you install this on your firearm, you can keep a round count on how many rounds you've actually fired through that firearm over a period of time. That's how I read it. So that's kind of cool. You can keep track of how many rounds you've actually Well, I'd be interested in... Along with the round count. But is this so it would remember the count when you turned it off? That would be the only way that's... that that would work, is that uh, it had an active memory. Um, and if you ever had to re replace the battery, you know, it would, would it remember the, the last, you know, if you shot, you know, Actually, looking at the screen here, it only looks like you can do one digit. So I don't think you can clock, you know, 500 rounds to your 1911 because well, the... I read the um, PDF file they had attached, and it showed some instructions where it actually will read the different numbers to you. So it would be like 0, 4, 5, 0. So it would blink a number and then go oh. to another number. And then that way you can keep track of how many rounds you fired through that gun. Very that's cool. how I read it anyways. That's pretty neat. Yeah, those PDFs are available under on their website. If you go to either the digital counter or the LED advisor, uh, right below the pistols, there's a horizontal line, and it says related material, quick start. If you click on that, that'll open up the PDF and give you um, little nice diagrams and, and more information on how these function. I'm very interested to see how the, the AR-15 uh, digital counter comes out because that would be very cool as well to see. 
I almost yeah, wish that they, 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 they. I was gonna say, uh, I know a lot of guys that are building long-range rifles, you know, with blueprinted actions and 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 custom chambers and whatnot, and they they keep a logbook of how many rounds they've put through that gun. It'd be uh, a little adv advantageous if to have something like that for a, a bolt-action rifle. That way you can, instead of counting your brass, you know, it, it had a little display of how many rounds you fired through that gun. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are scoffing and thinking, well, you know, good old, you know, right in the rain notebooks and, you know, doing it the old-fashioned way. Can't beat that. Uh, but this is this is a cool little technology innovation to our, to our field, and I, I think that it would have some practical uses, maybe not for everybody, but there's certainly a market for it. So again, if you want to look at those, it's uh, raidtech.com, R-A-D-E-T-E-C.com, and I'm going to do my best and have some uh, some products to officially review and to show you guys. <clears throat> I have a, a 1911 uh, that I'll probably use as, as my the test model as well. So I'm um, looking forward to, to filming some of that and uh, getting some good information out there for you guys. So that concludes the, the Tech Gadget segment. I do want to mention again the giveaway promotion for these uh, everyday carry keychain portable duct tape. Um, I, I see one review on iTunes. I will be giving, contacting that individual and sending him one of these. Um, so his name, I took a screenshot of it right here. <clears throat> his username, do, do, do. is uh, Y2KGB Mike. Uh, and he said, great review podcast. This podcast is a roundtable style discussion reviewing new gear and firearms and reviewing established gear and guns also. They do tend to rally, but on occasion they do put something on blast. They do also say to each their own. Uh, so thank you for that review, Mike. Uh, you know, sometimes we, we want to show off our, our favorite gear, and so we tend to rate it a little highly. Um, I, if you listen to last week's episode, I, I think you'll get a little bit more flaming uh, of, of products that I, I, I brought on the show um, that you know not all of our, our panelists as silly agreed with and, and thought were a, a big winner in the in the market. Um, but we, we try and be fair. We the things that we like, we're not shy about telling you, and the things that we don't like, we're we're definitely not shy about letting you know how we feel. So. If you want one of these everyday carry keychain, uh, probable carry, you gotta let me know by going to iTunes and leaving this podcast a review. It's gotta be the uh, gear and got uh, 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 sorry the gun and gear review podcast on iTunes and leaving us a review. Uh, you can also go to the firearmsinsider.tv website, go to Gun and Gear Podcast, and leave a comment on this podcast or one of the previous podcasts uh, last week and the week before that. I won't, I won't count uh, reviews before that or comments before that. Uh, and you can also go to the review section and any review that we've covered in the last three episodes, uh, especially uh, Kim's crossbow and uh, Daniel's Kimber, leave a, a comment on there, and I will be contacting you to send you one of these cool duct tape keychain things. Uh, I'm going to ask you if you want pink, black, or digital camo, depending on your preference. Daniel's already let us know that he would would like a pink one, so that's going to be going to him. I have uh, quite a few to give out, and I'm more than happy to do so. So uh, please leave us a, a comment or a review, and I'll be sure to get one of these to you. And uh, make sure you also listen to Tactical Paradise a podcast. You can go to www.tacticalparadise.com, another podcast on the Firearms Radio Network. 
Uh, Greg is uh, hilarious and knowledgeable, and if you haven't listened to that podcast yet, yet you are missing out. And also, I would like to announce uh, two new podcasts that are coming out to the network and, and welcome them to the family. The Shooter's Mindset and the... Uh, I'm sorry, I blanked for a second. The Power Factor Show. Uh, Power Factor is... If you haven't seen it yet, probably one of the most successful and popular video podcasts, uh, via, I guess you call them Vcast, uh, that's already out there, and they're joining the family. So if you if you haven't if you if you if you're shaking your head right now, that means that you've definitely seen some of their shows, and you know how how knowledgeable and and reputable and enjoying they are to watch and listen to. If you have no idea what I'm talking about. Go to YouTube, type in Power Factor Show, get some popcorn, and enjoy because it's definitely a blast to, to listen and to watch. And now you'll be able to uh, download, listen, and subscribe to the Power Factor by going to firearmsradio.tv. <clears throat> also, we have the uh, newly joined network or newly joined podcast, the Practically Tactical Podcast with Handgun Newbie. Make sure you download, listen, and subscribe to them as well. Check out all the other shows on the firearmsradio.tv slash iTunes webpage. Also make sure to go to our YouTube, uh, the Firearms Radio Network YouTube channel, and check out the, the SHOT Show 2014 footage that we've put together for you guys. Stay up on the what, what you might have missed in Vegas this year. You can also email me, cross at firearmsradio.tv, if you have any questions. You can also email podcast at firearmsinsider.tv or jake at firearmsradio.tv. For any questions, comments, if you'd like to come on the show, email jake or I. We'd love to have you on as a guest host. Um, if you have a product that you'd like to review, you, we can send you the review format, and then we can have you on the podcast, and you can... Uh, talk about your review on the air. Uh, so thanks again for joining me tonight. Uh, Daniel and Kim, thank you so much and for your reviews. Absolutely. You're welcome. It was good. <clears throat> so have a, have a good night and shoot safe. Stay warm and I'll catch you guys later. It's always a, a 